Hey, what's going on? Scott back with you. And in this video, I wanted to talk about saving on your CPU, um, your CPU load. And this is a helpful mixing tip uh, simply because uh, I know a lot of people might be working on computers that aren't the newest and don't necessarily have uh, all the power and capability uh, that maybe they would like. And I know this is something I struggle with. You know, I'm, I'm using a MacBook Pro that's a 2011. Um, so it's really important to keep these things in mind. And here are some tips that you can use that will lower your CPU usage, that will help it so your computer is not getting overrun and you're not getting pops and uh, things dropping out and other kinds of issues in your recordings. So uh, especially, this is especially helpful for those of you who might be like me and that you like using a lot of uh, virtual instruments and things. So uh, the first thing I, I wanted to point out, and, and I'm mixing in Logic, but a lot of these things can carry over between different DAWs. And the only challenge you have is to find out which, you know, where these settings are for your DAW and how you can do that. So the first thing I wanted to talk about was freezing tracks. Now, this is something that Logic allows you to do and you can do in other DAWs. But essentially what a freezing freezing a track does is, is rather than having the track, uh, especially if it's a virtual instrument, uh, you know, generating in real time, you're having your computer write the whole track over and then just play that uh, recording, essentially that imprint essentially rather than doing it in real time. So that saves you on processing power. So if I were to start playing this, uh, what I might run into, I might run into problems when all of my other tracks kick in. So what I can do is I can just freeze these tracks in place and I'll hit play and then it's going to go through and it's writing that. So another tip, uh, while you're, while I'm waiting for this to freeze here is to close other programs. I know it might seem obvious, but you know, if you're working in music, you know, right now I've got my, um, Google Chrome open. Chrome is a resource hog. Now my computer can handle it right now and that's okay. But if you are really having trouble, close down everything. I've actually got PowerPoint open. Uh, Microsoft office is not the most efficient thing. So I'm, I'm, closing that out as well. So try to keep the programs that are not your DAW and open to a minimum. Uh, that will definitely help you save on your CPU power. Another tip I would offer up here is to turn on your CPU monitoring. Again, no matter what DAW you're using, you should have the ability to do this. So you can see right here, I have this turned on and it was using a ton of CPU right there because I was uh, freezing all those tracks. But now watch the load as I start playing this song and, and watch these meters. Now this is helpful in that if you turn your monitoring on and you can watch your meters, your CPU, while you're going through your song, you can see where areas where, oh, hey, the load's heavy. I need to figure out a way to get around this. So if I were to start this song here. You get an idea of what we're doing. Now watch, I might jump a little bit here. So that gives you an idea of what's going on. And, and in this particular song, I'm not using too, too many tracks at once. Uh, so, you know, I actually, I am someone who really believes in uh, minimalist recording and minimalist uh, mixing and things. I know a lot of people want to use 24 tracks and hey, go for it. That's just not how I operate. Another tip uh, to save on CPU is to make use of auxiliary tracks and sends and sharing effects for multiple tracks. So another thing you can do is spread out your plugins to different channel strips. And how why this is helpful is that 
channel strips are tend to be processed by threads on CPU, and I don't want to get too technical here, but the idea is that if you have one channel strip and it's got a dozen plugins on it, that is a lot of load on the CPU because it's processing that thread individually. So what you can do is you can make use of busing. So I could, for example, if I had a bunch of plugins on this and I'm sending it over to bus two, what I could do is put extra plugins on bus two and it would still process at the same time and it would still not change the sound, but what it would do is instead of one thread, one channel processing all the plugins, it would be spread across multiple channels. This is a key tip that you can use to, again, help control that CPU load. Another tip that you can make use of is increasing your buffer size. Uh, now, obviously, this will increase your latency, so you will clearly have more latency, but you can play with your buffer sizes to lower your CPU load. Again, this works in Logic, Ableton, any other number of DAWs, you can mess with things like that. You can also reduce the number of meters you're showing. This is helpful, especially in Pro Tools. So your uh, send view meters, you can turn that off in your meters preferences. Uh, that again will help you save on some CPU power. So be smart with your plugins. Don't go crazy. Don't just start throwing a bunch of things everywhere and throwing a compressor on everything. If you can share plugins, do that. If you are using, for example, uh, some kind of compression, like multiband compression, and you can maybe get away with using fewer bands, do that, and just consider it, and, and really look at your meters, and find any areas that are problematic, and dig into it. That can really help you take your mixes to the next level, because you aren't going to be crashing out your system, uh, no matter how uh, rudimentary or old your computer might be, like mine is, uh, you can really be successful if you just are smart with your CPU.